Sputnik, the first man-made satellite to orbit the Earth. Mission accomplished, it returns to a planet that is forever changed. The space race is on. From ham radio operators to heads of state, all see that Americans need to massively ramp up efforts in science and technology to compete. The front lines are research labs. The warriors, mathematicians, scientists, and engineers. Few make a greater impact than the Fairchild Eight. The group that left Shockley to found Fairchild consisted of uh, eight guys. This group of eight had decided that they could do further work in silicon, which Shockley did not want to work with. The Fairchild Eight left William Shockley, and they didn't just launch Fairchild Semiconductor, they launched Silicon Valley. The integrated circuit, the modern computer chip, at least 150 patents, and 65 chip companies within 20 years. This story, in their own words, their own handwriting, is recorded as it unfolds here in these notebooks. Each time I pick up one of these patent notebooks, for me there's just a sense of such uh, anticipa anticipation of surprise. What I love about this collection is the way it reveals the scientific process in action. You open a notebook, flip through it, and suddenly you're looking over the shoulder of Gordon Moore or Robert Noyce. You'll find uh, processed wafers taped in there with notes about um, the results of particular runs. In the notebooks you'll find, you know, this is the day that we made the first working planar integrated circuit. Um, so it could be an aid memoir, it could be a log book, it could be a diary of sorts. The particular book we're looking at right now was written by Gordon Moore. Gordon, of course, was one of the founders of Fairchild. Uh, this time he was working for Bob Noyce. They had just received information about disastrous failures of the transistor in a military system. Take the device that you've made in manufacturing, transistor, plug it into a socket, and make it work. And now it looks good. But here's a pencil, Gordon. Tap it, lightly, like a little tiny vibration test. And he tapped it, and the device failed. The solution devised by Jean Hany is recorded here. It not only solved this problem, but became the basis of modern semiconductor manufacturing. These hand-drawn diagrams will appear next in a patent application for the planar process, one of the seminal patents of the semiconductor industry. In January 1959, Robert Noyce came up with an idea of using Jean Hany's planar process as a mechanism for interconnecting multiple transistors on a silicon chip to make what we now know as an integrated circuit. This is the essential patent that provided the basis for the modern integrated circuit industry. These were never meant to be long-term archival materials, but rather kind of ephemeral materials that could easily be replaced. Well, now that they have the t this manuscript in, written by Gordon Moore, this is very important material. And this one, you can see why we really wanted to do conservation earlier, because the problem is that the tape fell off of all of these photographs, and all of them belonged in these different places, but we have no idea where any of them were originally located. To me, it's really challenging. Well, this is our history. Uh, I mean, we can choose to, say, to, to not want to preserve um, the, the information about how we got here. Um, but we can also choose to say we want to do everything we can to make sure that we can create this trail backward in time. I've really enjoyed being part of the semiconductor industry. I came as sort of uh, the second generation uh, on the, the coattails of some of these people. The sketches, Polaroids, scribbled math, actual devices taped to the pages, all captured at the moment the idea was conceived. And it is fantastic that they are here and so easily accessible to researchers who want to use them. Only at the Computer History Museum can you see these great treasures of history. The semi-industry has been uh, good to me. It's, it's been a fabulous place or, or industry to be in and be part of. 
Um, so I'm happy to be able to sort of give back a little bit. Like many, I built my career on ideas that emerged from these notebooks. I want to conserve them, to study and interpret them, to experience the energetic handwriting of Gordon Moore, to follow Bob Noyce's stream of thought in a problem, to see the future through Jean Henny's sketches, and to preserve these notebooks for the generations to come. The Fairchild Notebooks, a fascinating window to the past, a stage set for the present, but they will only be part of the future if we act quickly. Once again, we find ourselves in a race, a race against time to preserve this fantastic legacy. Please help us in this effort. You'll add your own footnote to the Fairchild Notebooks and to the ongoing story of computing and its impact on this planet. This is a wonderful set of materials for those historians in the future to, you know, ask the questions that they have for their time about uh, the past.